anybody out there. Do improve cutting rings make food cutting easier than ever. Saves you time by slicing whole potatoes in only one stroke. Turns whole onions into zesty thin slices for delicious hamburgers. Slices mushrooms, tasty juliennes from sliced carrots. Turn the dial, slices are automatically thicker. Dial from slice to dice fast. Trump democracy. That's a scary thought, isn't it? Imagine what Trump democracy is going to look like. People being rounded up. Papers, please. You know, frisk everybody. That's it. Where are your papers? Yeah, Trump democracy. I can't decide which is worse, though. I mean, there's no lesser evil <laughs> between these two. These two are <laughs> members of the corrupt corporate class and always will be, and they have no interest in doing anything for the average citizen. We all know that. We're all, all aware that everything is rigged. Greg Palast is going to be coming out soon with a, a new film that I'm eager to see called The Best Democracy Money Can Buy. It's been in the works for a long time. And it's supposedly going to be released pretty soon, so I'm looking forward to to enjoying that. What level of, of corruption has the world reached? Well, I guess, you know, the <laughs> one look at the Pacific Ocean and the dying creatures and dying people all around the planet, the unmitigated suffering. What kind of people are running the world? Psychopaths, duh. But you know, and, and I see so many of these cynical old people denigrating the youth, today's youth. And when I see how politically aware they are and involved that this generation is, they're fantastic. What the fuck are you worried about? I mean, my generation, in spite of all its leftist credentials, most of them gave up all of their ideals once the 80s came along and we transformed into some kind of dog-eat-dog -dog plutocracy. The real ones stuck with it. I mean, the, the 80s for my wife and I were living in a, a little one-bedroom apartment and riding bicycles and waiting for the whole damn thing to pass over. That's when the wages began to decline. And that's when factories began moving offshore. That's when suffering became a, a way of life in North America, something we'd not been particularly used to because there had at least been attempts to ameliorate some of that suffering at one time. Uh, but with the dog-eat-dog -dog world that came in with uh, Reagan and Thatcher and Mulroney in Canada, the triumvirate of, of evil had begun to consolidate control around the globe. And so we see an increase in violence, we see an increase in resource exploitation, we see all those people that had sold out, that had once believed in something. I mean, they're Hillary Clinton supporters now, and they don't give a shit. They can't even see anymore how corrupt this woman is. Donald Trump, the same. It's no different. They're both absolutely horrible people, horrible candidates. I mean, we have these Trump saying he loves the uneducated. Well, of course he loves the uneducated. The uneducated are stupid enough to believe him. That's how he made his money is off the uneducated and exploiting them. Stupidity. Stupidity rules the day. But not in many, many people's hearts and know that we've got to face this. We've got to face horrendous leadership in America and that influences it around the world. Horrendous um, world government that has zero concern for citizens and the betterment of humanity. Uh, it only seeks to corporately enslave them We're going to jump to chapter two, permanent war. Anger and a sense of betrayal. 
these are what tens of millions of disenfranchised workers express. These emotions spring from the failure of the liberal class over the past three decades to protect the minimal interest of the working and middle class as corporations dismantled the democratic state, decimated the manufacturing sector, looted the U.S. Treasury, waged imperial wars that can neither be afforded nor won, and gutted the basic laws that protected the interest of ordinary citizens. You know, there's the old story of the dead fish all struggling on the beach because the tide had washed them all in. Of course, nowadays it would be due to radiation, but when I originally heard this story, I thought it made sense. They're all wriggling around on the beach and this guy's going up and picking picking up one and he tosses it back into the water, he picks up another one, tosses it back in the water, keeps this up for a while and the other fellow looks at him and says, you're not making any difference. Why are you, why are you doing that? Why are you bothering to do that? And the guy says, well, to this fish it makes a difference. It throws it back in. And this is what ego allows us to forget. Ego allows us to forget that every interaction we have with another creature affects that creature's perception of the world, either for good or for ill. I mean, all of us have heard stories about down and out people, and maybe when they're at their lowest, one simple act of kindness can change everything around, it can, can begin to to stop people from continuing a downhill slide. Isn't it amazing that antidepressants are incredibly, incredibly prescribed, over-prescribed in, in society and that they put all this money and research into it and everything. Rather than asking, why is there so much depression? Why is it rampant now? and try and address the causes of it. Here, have some medication, this will make you feel better, and get back to work on time because, damn it, we need you, and we value you, at least until next year when we can outsource your job. I mean, the dream, the dream of the oligarchs is to control the entire world, to impoverish the entire world <sighs> to somehow think that they can insulate themselves from the chaos that they are bringing down is the height of stupidity but you see that's the thing about narcissism the stupidity involved it makes people so blind to what's really going on. Does anybody remember the revolution in Romania with Ceausescu? And right until the moment they took him out and, and shot him, he was like shocked when all these, he was, came out and instead of all the cheering throngs that he was used to commanding, they had all turned on him and got rid of him. And they were shocked. There was no reason for him to be shocked. It had been exposed that the man had run a, a corrupt and, you know, torturous regime for, I don't know, however many years. It was no shock to certainly his victims, but it was a shock to Ceausescu and his wife because in their delusion, and we see this with tyrants all the time, they believe their own press. Their narcissism doesn't allow them to look at things realistically until the point where the whole thing goes over the cliff. And let's let's not hope that these nutcases push the entire world over the cliff because it looks like we're heading that way. 
no matter what happens, when you see the, the FBI, the situation with, with Hillary and the FBI is unbelievable. Yeah. Immunity from prosecution, immunity from prosecution, immunity from prosecution, immunity, immunity, immunity. What the fuck is going on? It's like they don't even care anymore that the public knows because they, they have grasped the levers of control so tightly and they believe in their own delusional thoughts that they're loved and only they have the solution to the problems. And that includes more tax cuts for the rich. That's always fixed everything before. Listen, folks, we're all in a mess. Let's look out for each other. Be kind to each other. Be kind, be kind, be kind. Because that's what, that's what will push back all of this. Kindness. Something humans really need to cultivate. Isn't it funny that our culture wants to breed kindness, man, particularly out of, out of children. You know, you, you, you bring them up with war propaganda and the, the John Wayne idea of the hero who goes and, and nobly saves his, his platoon. And then when you examine the, the stories behind these myths, you realize that the world has been run by warmongering psychopaths. And all it takes is for all of us good people to not say anything when they steal elections, to not stand up for justice. And, and it's not entirely people's fault because the, the, the amount of brainwashing and the scientific effort that goes into the propaganda is the most sophisticated thing that's ever been seen. You look at just what Edward Snowden released, and that's what we know about. By the way, Edward Snowden is a hero. And anybody, anybody that says he is a traitor is an idiot. Because the man actually exposed, he cracked the window open a little on the fact that you're not a free society. None of us are free anymore. And what we need to do is to change it and to work to change it. And we're not gonna work to change it by having demagogues like the guy that can't even make a profit running a casino, liars and thieves and the worst of the worst of the dregs. So what does that require? It requires all of us to put our heart and soul into changing things, whatever that is. But we got to start it on our own level, individually. Contact people, stay in touch with people. And the internet, the internet's a wonderful thing and it's going to, you're going to lose it soon. You're going to lose it by not standing up for it. And <laughs> when you get cable company lobbyists that are writing the laws governing the commons and extracting as much wealth out of the population as is possible. That's what's going to happen. Already we're seeing the beginnings of it. It drives them crazy that the internet is kind of a something that Pandora's box that they opened and they want it closed. They want control of it just as much as they had control of media before the internet. And at least there was some honest investigative reporting in that. But in spite of the internet now, and unless you go searching and risk being accused of uh, being a conspiracy retard, Excuse me for the word, that's probably not a good word to use. Finally, the heat has broken. Uh, the intense heat, which up until yesterday had 
been unbearable. The humidity was disgusting. The air was disgusting. And fortunately, those two magic words, cold front, appeared. And uh, all of a sudden, the air has cleared up and things are almost approaching seasonal. Although, I have a feeling that we'll never see seasonal temperatures again. Every year is the hottest on record, every single year. And what are the powers that are in there, supposedly looking after our best interests doing? Well, they're arguing about how many angels can dance on the head of a pin. How many apocalyptic angels can dance on the head of a pin as they prepare war machines of ever greater industrial capacity. Non-stop, non-stop spending of treasure, constant, constant billions and trillions and trillions of dollars into the war machine, into the machinery of death, into the gears of the machine. We must throw a monkey wrench. The corruption has gotten probably, as I've said before, beyond the the level of ancient Rome. Uh, I almost expect uh, Donald Trump, if he becomes president, to uh, appoint a racehorse to the uh, Senate, much as Caligula did, because he seems to be the same personality type. They're all the same personality type. And unfortunately, uh, in a democracy, the only way a democracy can exist is with the participation of the governed. If you do not have at least some modicum of representation, then you cannot possibly call what is left a democracy in any sense of the word. And I have seen this collusion between the most powerful on earth who never seem to tire of acquiring more things, more cash, more... They never seem to tire of acquiring things. You know, that's such a childish thing. I'm content with my lot in life as an older guy. I'm not complaining because I know there are people that have had it way worse. I just don't understand why as citizens we allow we allow ourselves to be lulled into a false sense of security and believing that those that we elect are there somehow to serve us. They are there to serve themselves largely because our entire culture supports narcissism. It rewards pathology. The sicker you are, the higher you rise in a society like this. The less you care about your fellow human, then you do not have any scruples and will have no scruples when you step all over whoever you have to step over because narcissists are all about me. They have no, no concept of their actions impacting other people. So they're without conscience entirely. And this is who is running our society. A cabal of narcissistic sociopaths who have agreed that they are more important than the rest of humanity combined and that they and they alone deserve to live and deserve to have the best things in the world because they are superior human beings according to them. Not because of any great accomplishment, but because they are able to steal from more people than anyone else. You know, there's an old Bob Dylan song and a line in it goes, uh, steal a little and they throw you in jail and steal a lot and they make you king. And boy, ain't that the truth. So I want to say to everybody out there, let's keep hope alive. Let's care about people around us. Let's uh, fight back against this 
pathology that our culture is trying so desperately with a media, the most corrupt media that makes the old Soviet Pravda look like a bastion of journalistic integrity. So sisters and brothers, stay strong in love. Nobody in government, no institution, nothing's going to be there for you other than other humans. And I say humans with a capital H, humans with heart, humans with compassion. And those of us who feel compassion must gather strength. Because if we are compassionate, then how can we not try and overthrow a system that is in essence, psychopathic and harming all life on earth, humanity, animals, the natural world, consuming it, consuming it. If this was being done by an alien race that had invaded us, and we're just destroying the earth. Would we fight back against it? Yeah, it's sort of like that movie. And there was John Carpenter's They Live, which was... I never liked the guy that acted in it. That uh, I don't know what his name was now, but I thought he was kind of wooden. But the point of the movie was excellent, and that is that if it were some foreign... Uh, alien entity doing this to our world, we would fight back. But because we're all being lulled into to sleepy land by the idiot box and the constant need for entertainment, and, and the more they can isolate people, the, the better they like it. Because a lot of the f foment in the 60s and, and, you know, 70s and did before the internet was face to face in places like coffee houses where people would gather together. And one of the sad things about technology, from this old fart's point of view anyway, is the disconnect between people. When the, I mean, we've all seen it when people are staring at their, at their phones. They're not present in the moment. They're not really living because when you're involved in electronic hallucinations like we all are, just like you and I are doing right at the moment, you're not living, you're not experiencing the joy of the natural world, the, how to connect with other people, uh, how to love, you truly love. It's something that homo sapiens are forgetting about, or forgetting large portions of them are, and, and, and are, are desperate. And we all know what desperation breeds and, and hor all kinds of horrors. And when we've been brought up in a society that had expectations that things would get better and improve in our lifetime. And we've seen, when I was a kid, they, they told us that the future was unlimited. It was going to be wonderful because automation would replace all those drudgery jobs and we'd only be working a few hours every day. How'd that work out? The corporate plutocrats that run the system believe that everybody needs to work harder, produce, produce, produce. And what do we produce? We produce uh, as crap. Can you imagine if you took every purchase that was made in one of those dollar stores since they opened up back in the 80s and traced it from the, the slave labor places in China where it was made and traced its life, its short life and into to the landfill. Could you imagine the pile of garbage that you would see? And this is what the West has blown their treasure on, piles of garbage. 
stinking mess, water that's got lead in it. Nobody knows what to do. I'll tell you what to do. Stop spending, stop funding one goddamn war. How about one of those stupid missiles? Couldn't you buy a few schools for one of those stupid things? No, that's not what counts. What counts is death and empire and extracting resources. Extracting, extracting resources till there's nothing left for anybody. Insanity. We're going the way of Easter Island and everybody knows the story of Easter Island. We cut down every tree and what do you have left? Nothing. Yeah, we're well on our way to doing that to ourselves. It's a terrible time to be alive. And yet it's a wonderful time to be alive if we have a sense of purpose. Mm -hmm.